Some sort of parasite or something. Virus. Some kind of parasite. Are we sick? No, of course not. Are we sick? No, of course not. <sighs> no cell phone. No radio. Yeah, we're doing great. A minute ago, newsman wouldn't shut up. No cell phone, no radio. A minute ago, newsman wouldn't shut up. How do you know? The hell. That's Lewis's farm. I hope that some bitch made it out. God. It's Jimmy's place. Ladies and gentlemen, that was when the mayhem started from the outbreak. This is Lamont Tyson giving you all the black people's version, the cookout version of how we saw this story for all of us black nerds. And if you're finding me for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. I will be breaking down Last of Us and the good work HBO is doing with these book series and video game series every week. Just turn on notifications for my channel. Um, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and you can download the podcast, which I'll be dropping shortly after this. And we're going to go live every Tuesday night for the fans. Come join us and talk about The Last of Us, which is about to be the best zombie style show that we've ever seen on TV. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This will be my full Last of Us episode one. In the very beginning, ladies and gentlemen, um, for those of you that don't know, this is based on a video game, one of PlayStation's top five most popular games, in my opinion. I loved it. I played it. And I hope HBO can do the same justice to God of War that they're doing for this, because those of you that are junkie fans of source material, They've done a damn good job of being very close to the source material with this video game adaptation. And I told you guys it is going to be better than Walking Dead. And maybe HBO has decided since we fucked up on The Walking Dead because HBO could have had Walking Dead, we better make this as good as possible. They start out with a bunch of scientists in 1968 talking about viruses and how pandemics and things like that can spread. And from what I'm understanding, this was all recorded pre-COVID. So some of the things that people would tell script writers to do in the beginning, which is not mention pandemics and stuff like that, they didn't listen and they went on ahead and talked about it. We have one scientist who's sitting over there just pontificating about how good things can be and regular viruses. And then we get to this other scientist, ladies and gentlemen, God, uh, be more careful. He's the one that's putting fear in everybody's hearts. And he's basically explaining how fungus can invade a host, take over the host's brain, and spread their fungus. And in real life, ladies and gentlemen, this is happening with ants and insects where a fungus, and they're talking about cordyceps in particular, take over animals' brain, get them to climb to the top of a damn tree, and spread their fungus. And that's kind of how they're gonna do in this series if you're following and ready to see how things are gonna go. But basically this scientist is just saying that the way things can take over is these fungus need heat. And with all the stuff that's happening with global warming in today's society, this shit could legitimately happen. And it can be spread via airplanes going coast to coast. And ladies and gentlemen, they're calling this thing CBI, which is cordyceps brain infection. And I know a whole lot of y'all nasty asses out there that enjoy eating fungus, you know, mushrooms, toenail fungus, all that kind of good stuff that you prepare and put on your burgers and shit. This is going to make you think twice about having fungus. And so from there, ladies and gentlemen, we time jump a little bit to present day in this story, which is 2003. However, I want you guys to keep in mind that the story really and truly on the video game took place in 2013. And you see a lot of graffiti and things like that from the Fireflies who, in this story, the Fireflies are kind of like the heroes. They're fighting the fascist governments that is shutting down everybody, quarantining everybody. And what they try to do in this story is make sure you understand that there are people out there fighting against the damn fire um, um, fascist governments. 
And the slogan you see scattered throughout this whole series, when you're lost in the darkness, look for the light. That is the fireflies. And it is also a premonition of Job coming through the darkness with a light savior, which is going to be the good sister Ellie, who he's going to be helping to save as this story progresses, ladies and gentlemen. One of the tantamount issues with the CBI, ladies and gentlemen, that makes this story so much different from other zombie stories and other apocalyptic stories is just the different types of infected you're going to have in this story. And I did a quick video last week about it. This story you're going to see similar to how the video game did it. You're going to have the infected that are called runners. And that's just basically your, your first form of the infection where you've got the normal zombie types where they just running around trying to bite you. And I love how on this zombie story that they didn't do in the video game, you get those little nasty twigs coming out of the old lady's mouth. Ew, imagine tongue kissing her. And those initial runners evolve into something called stalkers, which tend to be a little bit more harder to kill. And then the one that everybody talked about online in the video game, the clickers. You hear them clicking their teeth and they have what you call is kind of like echolocation because the fungus has taken over their face and you can't see them. And then you get bloaters where the fungus pretty much masks the skin with thick ass, tough fungus that makes them really, really hard to kill. And those throw spores, ladies and gentlemen, nasty ass spores. And then possibly we could see them evolve to shamblers, which throw spores and nasty ass acid, ladies and gentlemen. So this is going to be a, a whirlwind wide for different things that the fungus can do. And you're going to see different things in here where the fungus is going to attach to the wall. And when they attach to the wall, ladies and gentlemen, they throw out spores. So that's what makes these things so damn dangerous, ladies and gentlemen. And then some of these, when you kill them, I said, when you kill them and they're dead, the dead remain still throw out spores. That's just going to make this stuff so very crazy. And I can't wait to see how they play it out throughout these coming seasons. In the beginning, when they do the opening theme song, they pretty much show the spores taking over the whole United States and how they quickly spread across the United States and the world. And then when we pick up on the story in 2003, we're in Austin, Texas, where we see Joe and his brother, Tommy. And that brother, Tommy, is the same dude that played Ghost Rider in the Marvel shows. And then we meet his daughter, who is the beautiful and nice Sarah. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there's no mother in this story, which is kind of pretty much the way the video game was. And one thing that they done different here is they did give us the backstory of the fungus, which a lot of zombie movies don't do. And we haven't, um, they didn't do this in the video game, but we did get that here. And they go through Sarah, you know, they kind of let you begin to like Sarah. She goes to school and in school, you start noticing that something is going on throughout that day. Um, you notice in class, you got that little boy who's twitching. That's trying to show you the initial starts of the damn virus. And then things start to get a little weird when she goes to the store from taking her daddy's watch out of his drawer. She took the daddy's watch because she's going to get it fixed because today is the dad's birthday, just like it was in the video game. And that damn watch never gets fixed. It never, ever works. But the dad is going to continue to wear it, ladies and gentlemen, as a remembrance of his daughter, Sarah. And so she goes to school and then she comes back home. And ladies and gentlemen, that's when you see the weird shit happen with the neighbor, the grandma. And the grandma is infected. And pretty much because, you know, people was going to the retirement home she went to and they probably brought that shit home. And did you see how nasty that stuff was coming out of the grandma's mouth? Ew, you can just picture that nasty crap from the old heads. And as the story goes on, we see airplanes crashing, kind of referencing what the scientists in the beginning of the show was talking about. It can be spread through airplanes. And this also happened in the video game, ladies and gentlemen. They show you that Joel and his brother were somehow another combat veterans in Operation Desert Storm. Because during this time, George W. Bush was in office and they had a picture of him in class. 
And now everybody is having to take off and run and the shit doesn't hit the fan. And you even see Murphy, the next door neighbor's dog that was in there with the grandma banging on the door, trying to get Sarah's attention. And she didn't go help the dog. So I'm waiting for Peter to send some people up here to help get an assessment of why y'all not saving the damn animals. So they spread out and they run, they're driving their cars, that pay may mayhem, pandemonium is going on. And they finally get to a place where they're trying to cross over. And you see the military standing there between Joel and his daughter and his brother. And they basically just trying to get through. The military thinks that Sarah has a bite. So he's ordered to shoot them. And in this moment, ladies and gentlemen, they kill Sarah. And I'm just wondering, did you all have an emotional attachment to Sarah at that point? Um, I think that they've done a good job of backstory and how Joe was such a nice guy in the beginning um, and how he's going to transition into being kind of a butthole and very, very upset because they kill his daughter. She wasn't infected, but you know, the governments didn't know how the hell that happened. They don't know whether or not she's infected. So there's like, we are just going to take you out. And before that officer could shoot Joe, the brother came and saved him. But by this point in time, it's over for Sarah, man. Sarah's gone, but Joe kept the watch that she tried to get done for him. And um, that was pretty sad. And then we land in the present day, Boston 2023. They start out with a little girl standing at the cusp of the city. Now, the city looks bombed and shit because it is bombed because the government tried to eradicate the fungus infection to no avail it didn't help and you know these conspiracies about the government and people in the government come out because we know good and damn well the government would not tell us about anything until the last very breaking minute if aliens came down from mars and they've already seen them on the hubble telescope they would not tell us until it's almost damn too late and that's what's going on here with this fungal infection and we see the little girl sitting there in front of the officers and they scan her with that little thermometer looking thingy. Now, when the thermometer thingy is red, ladies and gentlemen, that shit means you're infected. And they tell this little girl, they're going to take care of her. She's got nothing to worry about. Well, they lied. They inject her arm with something that winds up killing her. And you later on see Joel throwing her into a burning pit. And then they just kind of show you the life around the camp, the internment camp, ladies and gentlemen, where if you do anything to go against the wheel, they're going to hang your ass and kill you. And then we see Joe, who he has his day-to-day -day job within the camp, but his secret job with his damn girlfriend, Tess, is being a smuggler. And you see him making a deal with this officer because he smuggles in drugs. And it just meant to show you that everybody in this show has their own agenda. agenda. They're kind of crooked. And this officer is going to come back up later on in this episode and you'll see what happened to his damn ass. And, you know, they basically in this quarantine lets you know if you violate their laws, they're going to kill you. And then we see we meet Joe's partner in smuggling, his current girlfriend, Tess. And I guess since she's a partner in smuggling, you can call her his snuggle smuggle buddy. And they're trying to get a battery so they can get to his brother who's in Wyoming. They've been separated. And you see them in here interrogating some guy because they somehow or another got scammed out of their battery. And that's when they encounter the fireflies, ladies and gentlemen. And we get a chance to see our first look at Ellie, who is Bella Ramsey, the little bear from Game of Thrones. And she's being interrogated by the Fireflies. Now, I told you guys, the Fireflies are not bad people. They're actually the good folks in this story. And they're trying to basically get Ellie, who has been bitten three weeks ago and has not turned across to the other side of the United States to some of the other Fireflies because she is, she is immune. Now, mind you, ladies and gentlemen, she's not going to be the only person in this story immune Eventually, we're going to see some other people immune. But one thing that you see throughout this whole story and on the video game is that there's not a lot of children. And not having a lot of children means there ain't no children being your future. And I'm sure that over time, there's probably going to be more and more children that are the ones who are not infected to help repopulate the United States. Because at this point in time, 60% of humanity is either dead or infected by this fungal infection. 
And then we see Marlene, who is the current leader of the Fireflies. And she is really, really a good person to the Fireflies and a good person in general to the story. She's the leader of this group of Fireflies in Boston. And she's talking about their mass escape plan to get Ellie out the city and to get her to the other Fireflies that have scientists ready to try to synthesize Ellie's blood and figure out if they can make a vaccine for everybody. But they need Joel because there was a gunfight in which Joel and the crew took out a whole lot of the fireflies and they, and she's making a pact with Joel that if you can get Ellie to the other side with the other fireflies, we're going to take good care of you and make sure that you are accounted for and that, you know, whatever happens, bro, you're going to be a damn hero in this thing and we're going to pay for you guys. And so... Ellie, they show her talking to Joel and she's talking about that watch that he's got. And basically they foreshadow Joel having visions of his daughter. And right now, ladies and gentlemen, Joel, he's hardcore, man. The only thing he cares about really is himself, his brother and Tess and trying to save his brother. But they're trying to show you now that he's starting to get a little sweet on Ellie and kind of making Ellie look like that's going to be the incarnation of his old daughter, Sarah. And they also, ladies and gentlemen, are going to make Ellie really, really tough. She's going to be a badass chick, just the same way this actor was as Little Bear in Game of Thrones. And over time, you guys are going to come to love Ellie and Joel's relationship and the kind of things that they go through. And as they're trying to escape, now Joel's got his mission, him, Tess, and Ellie are trying to get to the other side of the United States. Hopefully can, he's going to try to see his brother who at one point in time was working with the Fireflies. They encountered that same damn officer that Joe was making a pact with earlier. And of course, you know, you know, Joe's going to take his ass out or what may have you because he's standing in the way. And along the way with all that, ladies and gentlemen, you do see Tess realize that Ellie is immune. She's got the virus, but you see she's immune. She's holding up the thing showing that she um, has it, but she's immune. And Ellie does fully know, ladies and gentlemen, in case you didn't realize, that she has whatever this immunity is in her system. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for this re review. Please let me know how you've enjoyed this series so far. All off one episode, great start. I enjoyed the backstory of how everything went. It's only going to get better from here. So please be sure to join me Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time as we talk about this story live. Me and one of the biggest Game of Thrones know-it-alls in the world, my homie Lex the Targaryen. And be sure to download the podcast, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And until that next Sex is Hell video, I'll see you.